Hi, welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we're looking for even more junk in the garage to turn into something useful. It would be far too boring to finish one of my existing projects like the airboat or my rail bike or whatever this stuff is. We've got a bunch of extra junk lying around and we need to make something out of it. Over here we have a satellite dish and this pan tilt zoom camera adapter which may or may not work. So was fun as it would be to make a auto potato cannon turret, I think I'm going to make some kind of a radio telescope or satellite interface device out of this. And I did look up the manual of this thing, and it says it can support 15 pounds. So let's see how heavy this dish is. Alright, the satellite dish is 14 pounds. So theoretically this monstrosity should fit on that PTZ mount without destroying it. Now to start with, I'm probably going to have this be a manual drive pointing mechanism, maybe using something like this old RC controller. And in the future, I'd like to have it automated so that I can point at different targets in the sky and possibly track things like planets, satellites. But for right now, let's just see if we can mash up the satellite dish and that PTZ unit and get a pointable dish. And then... Maybe we'll play around with it with a SDR and see what we can find. I also went to Axeman and got a different LMB. And what this does is down convert a microwave signal into something more in the gigahertz range or sub gigahertz range so that you can actually listen to that signal with a software defined radio, which I've been playing with in some of my other videos. Currently this PTZ unit is doing nothing and I think I'm reading the wiring diagram right. So time to open it up and see if there's a fuse inside or if something's broken in there. Well, there sure is a lot of gunk in there and I'm not so sure that this piece is supposed to be bent like that. So this PTZ unit seems to be dead. I cannot resurrect this motor. I can't find any replacement motors online. So for once, I actually have some garbage that deserves to be in the trash. I'll probably strip some of the parts out of it, but I can't use this one. Fortunately, I dug around a little more and I found this one and also this little one. So we're going to see if one of these works and uh, carry on. Now I'm always a fan of using plumbing parts for random technology, but this is kind of ridiculous. Somebody just made this out of giant pipes. This RC joystick is actually a little too complicated for what I want. Fortunately I have a simpler one lying around that I'm not really using, so I'm going to take this apart and see if these joysticks will work. So this other RC controller was a little too simple. When I was trying to solder on to the contacts here, I managed to completely pop that one off. So uh, I can't get a good contact on that remaining lead there. So I might have to downgrade even more from this and just go with some push button controls. That's not very fancy, but eventually I want to control this with like an Arduino or something. So I guess it's not that bad to just go with buttons. I'm gonna salvage some nice push buttons out of these things. I'm not quite sure what they are, but they've got some buttons in them. Okay, I've got my little redneck controller here. And it still does not want to go left. There's like a short somewhere in my left wire. So now that we've got the mount mostly working with my handy dandy little controller here, now I need to get the satellite dish actually mounted on it. I'd like to briefly apologize for any missing video or gaps in this. I'm using a Google Pixel 3 to film this one, and it's garbage. Uh, it was supposed to be a good phone for video. It's supposed to have good features, slow-mo and whatever, but it loses video like crazy. It corrupts videos. Uh, the variable frame rate thing is terrible for editing, and even when you manually disable variable frame rate, it's never really disabled. So 
don't buy a Google Pixel 3, at least not for video. They're trash. I will try to upgrade to something better for future videos. So after all that work and all that screwing around, it turns out that this PTZ mount is not actually strong enough to hold up the dish. However, we have this little one, and after doing some more research on that and finding the pinouts in the manual, it seems to have a little more torque and a little more ability to resist rotation. So I'm going to see if, if this will hold up the dish. If it won't, we might have to get or make a smaller dish. But if it will, then we'll use this for the dish. And maybe we'll use this other one for another type of antenna. So for controlling these PTZ mounts, I didn't really want to mess with the multi-pin connector that came with them. So I just went ahead and crimped the uh, wires that I needed into a regular Cat5 Ethernet jack. And then I put another Ethernet jack on my controller. So I can just use a standard Ethernet cable to control this antenna mount from anywhere. And I think I can use a pretty long cable because it is a 24 volt AC signal going from the control to the antenna. Alrighty, seems like the third time's the charm on these PTZ mounts because I finally have one that works with the dish. I think I need a better tripod mount or some other better mount for this because that one's falling apart but otherwise this all seems to work. All right we got this big wad of garbagey TV cable that came with the house so I'm gonna go ahead and use some of that for my antenna cable. We've got one of my bins of antenna connectors. I think I'm gonna want one of these and maybe that and one of those and one of those. And maybe eventually I'll want a splitter, but uh, not yet. I've gone ahead and swapped out the original LNB that came with this dish for this other one that has two cable in outs. And that way I can put power through one of these and signal out of the other one. Um, this is also a little bit lighter, so it's uh, less stress on my PTZ mount because this one's just made out of plastic. Here is the current radio telescope setup. We've got the dish with the PTZ mount. Uh, I've just got a couple 9 volt batteries providing 18 volts into the LNB. And then the signal comes out and goes over to this laptop running GQRX on Linux. And I've got this pretty terrible adapter here. I'm gonna have to order something like a UHF to F adapter, but for now I'm just uh, winging it. And then we've got our PTZ controller to aim the dish. And I'm going to see if I can find anything. I might start by seeing if I can find the sun. Because it's winter in Minnesota, you don't really know where the sun is. It's just this anonymous mass of gray in the sky. Okay, so this is just regular background radiation. And then as I pan across where the sun should be, things get a little uh, more energetic here. And this is radiation from the sun hitting the dish. Now I suspect this waveform here might be a geostationary satellite and this could be a TV satellite or it could be something else. I'm not really sure. It does seem to have a beacon signal on a slightly lower frequency. If we click over here we can actually hear a tone. Here's another signal that looks a bit like a satellite. And again, I'm operating right at the top of what this RTL-SDR unit can do. Uh, this is one of the cheap units. It can only go up to about 950 megahertz. And the LNB on that satellite dish, the low end of what that's putting out is 950 megahertz. So there's not a lot of overlap with what I can see with this hardware right now. I'm going to need to upgrade to a nicer uh, SDR unit before I can really see more satellite stuff. So this is essentially a part one of a video series where I'm going to be doing other things with this rig. Uh, right now I don't have exactly the right hardware and software set up, so all I can really do is show the location of satellites, 
see where the sun is on a cloudy day. That's about it right now. Uh, future things that I'd like to do with it include finding more satellites, actually pulling data, video, um, other imagery off of satellites. You can get NOAA weather satellite data. You can get geosynchronous imagery from Earth observing satellites. Some of those require a slightly different antenna, which I might also be doing with that other PTZ mount. And then you can also get free-to-air or FTA satellite video, things like PBS, um, things like educational programming, and then, of course, uh, more radio astronomy. I'd like to be able to point this at things like Jupiter and listen to it, see what kind of radiation signals it's sending out. Uh, it would be fun to do some uh, deeper field radio astronomy, try to listen to other stars. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do with a home rig like this, but it will be fun to experiment with. So watch for some of those things in future videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.